Hello, lovely people, and welcome to another Let's Try. This is Pentiment by Obsidian. I've been really looking forward to this game ever since it was first announced. It has a really unique setting, a really unique art style, and it's been getting pretty good reviews so far. This isn't going to be a full playthrough. It's just a let's try. We're going to check it out and I'll probably finish it on my own because it's an RPG. I'm expecting it has a decent playtime. Maybe I should have checked it out first. Let's do easy to read fonts. I'm getting old. My eyes can't handle strain. Oh, got it. In principio erat verbum. In the beginning was the word. The word? What? I'm not reading all that. Um, move stone. Not that I could read all that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, press stone. Here? Why am I erasing? It's all pretty. I just flew off. I had nothing to do with it. I love this font. It's just so difficult to read, though. Well, especially when it's in Latin. I haven't studied Latin since college. I loved it. Just wasn't much use for it. Except for, like, saying, oh, I know the root of this word. Which is fun for some nerds. It was fun for me. But nobody else that I w was talking to ever. <laughs> Look how cool this looks. Ein Traum. This is such a unique idea. It's just really exciting. Especially coming from Obsidian, who, you know, Fallout New Vegas, The Outer Worlds, those kinds of RPGs. An artist's mind, an artist sleeps. cool this looks. And the abbot said to me, Andreas, I need you to finish this commission by the end of April. Isn't that much earlier than you were expecting? So loud. Yes. He had told me I had until the Ides of May. Asshole. And he's not going to pay you anymore, is he? He has no appreciation for the cost of your sweat. The yield of labor should not be... Oh, this is Socrates. <laughs> the yield of labor should not be measured in coin, but in personal satisfaction and self-improvement. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Personal satisfaction doesn't put much food on the table, though, does it? How did you reply to the abbot, Andreas? I shrugged and kept on... Well, I guess it is an abbot. He deserves some respect. Oh, I said I would go with something. I didn't even read it out loud. With discipline and mindfulness, you will persevere. If you don't kill yourself striving to meet the abbot's unreasonable expectations. I didn't even see her right there. What she said. What's the point in burning your candle to the nub for the idiot abbot's sake? Despite the abbot's ire, you must endure. Soon you will have finished both the abbot's work as well as your masterpiece. 
and then you will return to Nuremberg, where marriage and your new life as a master await you. Well, that was underlined. Could I do something with that? Yes, marriage to someone he has never met. Hardly ideal. Well, the alternative is becoming a philosopher. Oh, Jesus. Then you should definitely get married. Is she pretty at least? Yeah, I can't do anything with Jesus. The small portrait they sent was lovely, but we artists can be flatterers. It is growing late. The wheel of time stops for no man, Andreas. I fear you must leave us. True, your majesty. Will you visit us again soon? Hopefully. But it's out of my control, your majesty. As are many things. Trust in providence. Grobian, please see Andreas safely home. Of course, your majesty. Until next time, Andreas. Until next time, your majesty. Look at this art style. It's fantastic. Pay no mind to the other fools, Andreas. I never do. Ow! <laughs> At least I would if they'd stop stepping on my feet. Watch where you're going. They're fools, Andreas. No point in trying to teach them anything. I know old John wants you to endure the abbot's shit, but since I take you home, I get the last word. Don't let him run you ragged, boy. He's just trying to keep order in the abbey. I'm an outsider. Right. An outsider he brought in. If he wants your work, he has to deal with you as you are. Look at that guy at the bottom with his tongue sticking out. Gah. Would you please? Just throw him overboard. I give up. Take me home, Grobian. As you wish, Andreas. Like, are fools actually fools? Or are they just fools when they're, like, on? Look at this cute little thing. Good morning, Ursula. Yeah. <laughs> doink, 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 doink. Time to get up. The Baron, April 1518. Go to bed. Mm -hmm. Quest? Oh, quest. I thought that was like the interact button. Another day, another few pages for the abbot, and hopefully a few for myself. I need to get across town and head up to the abbey so I can start work at the scriptorium. Ooh. Location objective, investigate, meal. Brother Piero of Verona, artist of Kirsau. Abbey, known for his kindness and helpful nature, Brother Piero is also respected as a master painter specializing in works of extraordinary color. Group? Nuremberg, the free imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire, major trade center and city of arts, including printing. Why is there still more map? Oh. Scriptorium. Where am I? Outer tassing. Tass. I'm sure it'll make more sense as the game progresses. That is me. Interact. I really should clean this up. Nah. Picatrix, Key of Solomon, the Heptameron, Prior 
Varric keeps giving me all of these books to read. Gertner House. Look at how cute she is! <laughs> I guess I should talk to her. I won't understand a word she says. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Good morning, Andreas. Did you sleep well? Quite well, actually. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Anyway, I know you'll be off to the Abbey, so I packed you some food. Almonds, cheese, and some of the rye you like from the Albans. Otto wanted me to ask you to join him for dinner at the Abbey. Okay. Otto stopped by? Yeah, around dawn. Why are you so interested? Here you are. That's too kind of you, Clara. Many thanks. Master Andreas, it wouldn't be too much trouble. Could I... I mean, could we... Would it be too much trouble if you paid next month's rent today? And if we raised it by two groschen? I hate to ask, but we're behind on our taxes to the Abbey. Two months behind. Peter's losing his hair over it. Even more than usual, I mean. Um, I'm not sure how. I can't promise anything, but I'll see what I can do. Of course. I understand. I hate to even ask it of you. Our taxes get harder to pay every year. Peter works hard, but it just never seems like it's enough. St. Luke bless you for helping us out. Speaking of St. Luke, how is your masterpiece coming along? It's been two months now, hasn't it? Slowly, I'm afraid. Most of my days are spent doing work for the Abbey. It's only during the Divine Office that Prior Ferenc allows me to work on my masterpiece. <laughs> I like how he's already calling it a masterpiece. A reasonable restriction, but slow going. The city council doesn't require it to become a master. I'm making it mostly to show clients, and for my own sake. And yes, when I do finish, I will go back to Nuremberg, where I will marry and open a workshop of my own. From Nuremberg to a university, and now traveling the world as an artist. What a life you have ahead of you, Master Andreas. Yeah, I suppose it does feel like I'm starting a new chapter in my life after... A few missteps. It must be rather frightening, starting all over again. It is, but I know now that this is what I want to do. Not many people get to decide that. Certainly not anyone in Tassie. Anyway, I don't know anything about art, but I've seen you sketching such beautiful things in your little book. Your masterpiece must be wonderful. Well, it's hard to say until it's done. That's no way to think about it. I'm sure it will be a treasure when it's finished. Now, I have to get back to my own work. Have a good day at the Abbey, Andreas, and we'll see you after Vespers for supper. Not tonight, but thank you. Klaus Drucker invited me over for supper. Of course. Please say hello to the Druckers for us. Of course. Until later, Clara. I wonder if I can... Speed up the dialogue. Place character sequences with custom characters. What's that mean? I don't know. Enable me medial... Is that S supposed to be attached to medials? Oh, medial S characters and fonts. Control the size of the character heads in the game? Oh, may cause some visual issues. Let's like... Virtual cursor sensitivity. Gamma, audio. Accessibility. 
controls. <laughs> Much better. How about you? Hello, Andreas. All you got to say? Okay, fine. Um, do I have to talk to everybody? No, I can only go on a straight line. Morning, Andreas. Morning, Big York. How's it going? You working today? Just taking a rest for a bit. Dad's still in the field. He hit a big rock with the plow and it took me Lord knows how long to pull it out. You off to the Abbey? Every day but Sunday. Right. Thank God for Sundays. Smells like a storm's coming, no? Just smells like fresh alpine air to me. You've been traveling too much. Where was it you spent your wander yara before you came to Tassing? Trace knows some Italian and French and can reference cultural touchstones from Basil and nearby Baron Zurich and Fry. Trace knows some Dutch and French. Oh, pick a background that will affect your character's choices going forward. Italian, a little Greek, and can reference cultural touchstones. Italian and French. Over in Switzerland, Basel mostly. Swiss air must be different then. Spend enough time in these mountains and you'll be able to smell a storm coming. How long will that take? 10, 15 years? I don't think I have that long, Big York. What'd you spend all that time in Switzerland doing anyway? Other than art, I mean. I was a hedonist. I was a bookworm. Let's be realistic. Craftsman? Lives to work and dedicates all of his time to his art. One of these. Lives to work and dedicates... Well, he's an artist. Let's be a bookworm. Reading, mostly, and talking about books. I couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> I went all the way to Switzerland. Talk about books. Basel is a tremendous center for woodcut artists and printers. And the books they produce are treasures. Every one. I didn't realize that books meant that much to you. I haven't... I've seen Father Thomas's Bible and a few other books. I haven't had much use for reading, though. Anyway, I have to get going. Jorg! Let's go! That's already acting like I'm taking too long, even though I did all the work to get that rock out. See you later, Andreas. See you later. Fish beta. Is this his dad? Andreas? That is my name. Ill Peter. God bless you. He looks, why does he, he make, he looks like a goat. What is that in the background? <laughs> and the pigs have big heads. Andreas. Oh, yes. Andreas. This weather's been god awful. This town's gone to shit since my days. Things very different when you were young? That's different as beer and piss. I personally can't tell much difference between beer and piss. The old abbot didn't bother us much about our customs. Didn't mind if we left a little offering to Perchta to keep the skies clear, the weather fair. Erkta? I don't know. Is it Matthias? Or is it Matthias? Matthias knew that Christ was in our hearts, even if the white lady's name was on our lips. You think that spirits have been fouling the weather since no one follows the customs anymore? <laughs> Sharper than you look. The saints weren't the first to watch over Tassing. My father knew that. Old Rannick Kemper knew that. That bastard abbot may not like it, but some of us keep the traditions alive. Like the old widow, Otilia. 
Yeah. She always hangs the door frame with lavender to keep the spirits out. Even if it doesn't help with spirits, it does smell nice. I suppose. I just know it helps with ghosts and witches and whatnot. Cough, cough. I should go. All right. God bless you. Can't go that way. Look at this little bird. Oh, I guess they're chicks. <laughs> With their giant eyes. Town commons. Let's go. Hey, dude. Hello, Andreas. Ender Schmidt Smithy. It's so much smaller than the one he uses at the Abbey. I can't go up, so I can't talk to those people. Martin, please! Can you give me a hand here? What do you want? I'm keeping an eye on him. That looks a lot like standing there and doing nothing. Martin, for Christ's sake, help your cousin. Ah, morning, Andreas. Excuse us. One of the, re the fence rails fell, and the sheep started hopping it. Is there something I can do to help? Have you ever handled sheep before? Good point. Oh, look. There's something going on up at the Steinauer's place. Mm-hmm. Some dude's pointing. Sat on the horse. Looks rich. I don't know, Martin, but Lucky is giving him an earful. Christ, I haven't seen Lucky that worked up since Peter and Clara's wedding when Johan pulled his pants down. <laughs> Knocked two of my man's teeth out. You don't want to feel the strength behind a stonemason's anger. You think he's a noble? He looks really rich. God damn it, Martin. Stay out of trouble for once. What, Aunt Hetty? Behave yourself. Don't we have enough to deal with right now? Andreas, if you wouldn't mind moving your skinny little body up the road, we need to get these sheep under control. Fine. Of course. See you later. Don't work too hard, Martin. Hmm. What, me being a smartass? What? Is this where I want to go? Church and Druckers. I guess so. Morning, Andreas. How's it going? Morning, Klaus. Another day at the Abbey, another few hours to work on my masterpiece. Good to hear. You still coming by for supper tonight? Maria and Bert would like to see you. Would love to see you. You really need to see these... God, this... The audio is distracting to me. You really need to see these new woodcuts I have for an Italian edition of Till Eulenspiegel. I didn't realize Father Thomas let you print books in Italian. Come on, Andreas. He's not that strict. I know he's just trying to protect people from... Adventure stories of questionable moral repute? He doesn't mind those so much, actually. No? As long as they don't get too... carnal. Oh. So, supper tonight? After Vespers? Of course. Thank you. Great. I'll tell Marie and Bert you're coming. See you then. See you later! Hey, you! God bless, Master Mahler. I hope your week is going well. Thank you, Father. It's going quite well. I'm just on my way up the hill to get to work. Good, good. Andreas, I don't recall seeing you at Sunday morning Mass. 
You understand how important it is for your salvation that you receive Holy Communion, don't you? Uh... Yes. I apologize, Father. Thomas, I promise you, I'll make it this Sunday. You don't have to make a promise to me, but our salvation is contingent on... Oh my, what a blessed day to receive such an illustrious visitor. Master Mahler, this is Lawrence, Baron of Rothfogel, a great lord from the countryside near Worms. Good to see you, Father Thomas. It is nice to be remembered fondly. I only wish all of your neighbors were as welcoming. Well, yes. What brings you back to our little town? My wife and I were returning from a trip to Venice. We spent a few days in Innsbruck, and it was terribly dull. I mean, it has a certain charm common to these Alpine cities. The place was crawling with nobles for the Emperor's diet. The Emperor? Was he there? Did you see him? Oh, briefly, but he was sitting for a portrait at the time. Quite lovely. I didn't want to bother him or the painter. Who was the artist, my lord? I'm sure you know him. An older man from Nuremberg, with enough of a reputation to paint the emperor. I'm sorry, my lord. I'm not sure who you mean. Have you not heard of Albrecht Dürer? Pity. I thought he was known across the empire. He is. Anyway, my wife wanted to stay a bit longer in Innsbruck, and I decided to ride ahead to make a visit to Kearsau. I heard Father Matthias died shortly after my last visit, of course. Wait, I thought that was Matthias. Oh, no, it's not. A great loss for the Abbey and for us all. Indeed. By good fortune, I recently came across a copy of the Historia Tassier he was reading during my last visit. I'm having a hard time keeping all these names and words straight. Father Matthias was hoping to find a second copy to corroborate the contents of the first. It contains some fascinating details about the history of this place. I'm afraid... I'm afraid they might even cause a bit of a scandal. <laughs> ah, yes. Hmm. But I must be off. There will be time enough to discuss Tassing's passing pass later. I, I don't know what's happening. I can't read. Tassing's passing. I commissioned a manuscript from the Abbey through Father Gernot, and I have come to check on its progress. Oh, my lord, if you have come to see your manuscript, you should speak with young Master Muller here. Not quite, no. It's an honor to meet you, my lord. Andreas is a journeyman artist from Nuremberg. For the next few months, he's also helping in the Abbey's scriptorium. A Nuremberger artist working in an Abbey scriptorium? In 1518? Oh, we should talk, Andreas. I must know the story. Um, of course, my lord. It would be an honor. Wonderful. It's so rare to find someone in the countryside who knows anything about art. Thank you for the introduction, Father Thomas. Come to supper at the Abbey tonight. I'm inviting you to the Abbot's table. I can't. Is... Did the Abbot invite me? Oh, don't worry about it, Father. Just show up after Vespers. What is he going to do? Refuse us? I... Excellent. We'll see you then. But I already told Dude that I was going to... Miklaus, I'm dismounting. Run ahead of us and take the horses to the abbot's guest house. I'd like to take my time talking with Master Mahler. I'll meet you there. No, I'm late. Should have said I was late. At once, my lord. Oh, God. I'm going to get chastised, aren't I? What is that? So then, a journeyman from Nuremberg. Forgive me for saying so, but you seem a little old to not yet be a master. Are you unmarried? No, I'm not married. But in truth, I came to my vocation later than my father and brothers. I was in university for a number of years at Erfurt. Erfurt? Wonderful! The same university as Martin Luther. Have you read his works? Tremendous mind. 
Look at those people in the background working. He says things about the church that should have been said years ago. Might get him into trouble, but he's a brave, brilliant man. What's up with the statue? Wait, you may have even met him. Did you? You must tell me. No, he was a few years ahead of me. Still, his ideas do seem fascinating. I agree, wholeheartedly. I simply must meet him if I get the chance. I wonder if the good brothers of the Abbey have heard of him. Probably. Perhaps they've even read his list of 95 theses against the church. I'm sure he's a favorite. Father Matthias was not above having a lively debate. I hope Father Guernot does not disappoint in that regard. But enough about Luther for now. Tell me about your university studies. Forgive me, Baron, but did you attend university? You seem very well educated. <laughs> no, my family is merely wealthy enough to have provided me with all of the books and tutors a child could dream of. I love all knowledge, from Aristotle and Cicero to Ficino and Erasmus. And everyone in between and yet to come. I may have misjudged the Baron. Seems he is as well-read as any university student. Oh, was that a thought bubble? In truth, I am simply happy to speak with another well-educated man. Now then, did you earn your doctorate? Uh, no, I didn't. Only a master's degree. I started working toward a doctorate, but didn't finish. Well, that's a shame. Well, what was your area of study? Medicine. Imperial law. Yawn. Yeah. This is a well-rounded person. All things medical, studying the latest and greatest texts coming out of Italy. Yes, the Italians continue to innovate in that area. Extraordinary, really. Fascinating work. Who knows what secrets we may learn about the human body in the decades to come. You'd be surprised. You. If I had any faith, I would have prayed you'd never show your face here again. Er? Curse you, Lawrence Roth... Roth... Vogel? <laughs> Perchta's dogs tearing you to pieces would be too kind of fate. Okay, bye. These rustic communities display a shocking lack of hospitality, don't you think? What was that about? Who knows? By the time I finish guessing, the old crone will probably be dead. <laughs> Well, what of your early time in university? Every student must study the trivium and quadrivium, yes? Did you have a favorite subject? Occultist. Clearly not Latin. Heavens and earth. I go with my immediate reaction, which is occultist. I used my access to the university's library to pursue more esoteric interests. Oh? Esoteric how? Mystical texts, books on alchemy, invoking spirits, divination. Purely academic, of course. Of course. I started with Ficino's Corpus Hermeticum, and my interest only deepened from there. Quite interesting, Andreas. I'll make some time to speak with you more on this topic during my stay. I look forward to it, my lord. Please be discreet about it, my lord. Yes, that's why we will talk about it later. And your other studies? Was there anything else you excelled at? Um... Latinist, because it's something I wish I had stuck with. I focused on Latin. It's useful in so many ways, but especially for understanding manuscripts. Wonderful. A beautiful language used in the greatest empire of the ancient world. Tell me, what is your favorite sententia? Remember to tell the tale of another's kindness many times, but whatever kind deed you do for others, keep quiet. Yes, Kato the Younger. 
an unflinching defender of the Roman Republic. But what did his principles get him? Death at the hands of Caesar. Not quite true. He died by his own hand. That little bunny over there. And when Caesar learned of it, he said, Cato, I resent you for your death, for you denied me the chance to spare you. A bitter end, but not without a measure of sweetness. Ah, there's the abbey. I have good memories of this place and of Father Matthias. I was sad to hear of his passing. How did you come to know him? How did you come to know of Kearsall at all? My family have been patrons of Kearsall for, oh, I don't know how many generations. Some years ago, I heard that Kearsall had still had a wonderful library and artisans. Professional artists have taken over most manuscript production, so I was shocked to find an active scriptorium here. Well, there's not much left of it these days. Two old men, a young scribe, and me. Yeah. Ah, well, perhaps it is nostalgia that brings me back here. I commissioned a manuscript through Father Gernot. I can't decide if it's Father Gernot or Father Gernot. I'm going to say Gernot. A year ago, I thought I would stop by and check on the progress. Are you the artist working on it? It's a prayer book with 20 illustrations. I know the work, but no. I do know the artist well, the venerable brother Piero. How venerable. He still has his wits and his skills, if that's what concerns you. Brother Piero has an incredible talent with color. And I very much look forward to seeing it. I sure I'm in a hurry, as I'm running late. Miklaus, tend to the horses and the baggage. I'm heading up to the abbey. Yes, my lord. <laughs> the head poking over the top. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to, but it is now. Well, let's not keep the abbot waiting any longer. Hello. Hi. Nuns. Quite unusual for a Benedictine house to have monks and nuns, even if they are separated. The church closed most of them centuries ago. But then, Kirsau is a place out of time, in more ways than one. Do you know Mother Cecilia? She seemed to recognize you. We are acquainted, yes. Let's leave it at that. Hey, dude. Ah, you must be Father Guernot. I'm Lawrence, Baron of... Yes, the Baron of Roth Vogel. <laughs> so wonderful to have you here again. We actually did meet on your last visit. Ah, if you say so. I'm not good with remembering faces. Please forgive me, my lord, but I wasn't expecting you for another few days. Yes, I know, but I wrote ahead. I just couldn't wait to see my manuscript. I'm sure it's no trouble. What? Well, I... Yes. I mean, no, it's no trouble. Did you want to see it now? Oh, in a moment. I could do with a bit of refreshment, though. May I grab something from the kitchen? Yeah, sure. Certainly, my lord. I'll meet you there. Jerk. Hi. Andreas? I don't know what you were doing with the Baron, but I need you in the scriptorium. Now. <laughs> Is this a bad time to ask for an advance on my payment for the Book of Hours? Of course, father. I'm eager to get to work. Then get to work. Shit. Should have asked him about an advance for Gertner's taxes. It didn't seem like the time. Yeah, I could just convince Brother Mathieu to pay me early. Lower app, find a way to get paid. Oh, 
Oh, that's where I am. Wait, are there two scriptoriums? There's one there on this page, and then there's one with a star. I are confused. Father Gernot might be receptive to a negotiation for the funds. I'll need to approach the subject carefully and make it worth his while. Or I could talk to Brother Mathieu. Hmm. Go in the church. Let's go running in the church. Hello, Rudiger. God bless you, Andreas. Is your voice yet recovered from Easter Mass, Rudiger? Ah, yes. Bit of a strain, but a worthy sacrifice. Well, if the Lord could give us his all on Easter... Exactly. Have a good day in the scriptorium. Have a good day singing. Cloister. Crypt. Ooh. Tower. Dormitory. Old Bailey. Oh, there's dude. Sacristy. God bless you, Andreas. How is the sacristy today, Matthew? Same as yesterday? Does my vocation seem silly to you, Master Maller? No, I was just being friendly. Then go in peace, friend, knowing that the Abbey's treasures are secure for another day. God be with you. One more thing. I have a favor to ask you. Yeah? I was hoping you could give me my pay for the latest manuscript early. This isn't part of the agreement you made with Father Garneau. You'll be paid on the completion of each additional manuscript you illuminate, not before. I only have a few pages left, Brother Mathieu. I'll finish them in the next few days anyway. Then I think you can wait a few days to collect your wages. This abbey runs through mutual agreements, not haphazard payments. Breaking such contracts would cause undue trouble, not only for Kirsau, but for Tassing as well. Is that why Father Abbott has increased the taxes on the Gertners? What is this about, Andreas? I would like to help the Gertners pay their taxes to the Abbey. The Gertners' failure to pay their taxes have reached even you, I see. Very well. Do not ask this of me again, Andreas Muller. Here you are. I shall note this with Father Gernot and Prior Ferring. Okay. Thank you, Brother Mathieu. I got into the sacristy. Hmm. God bless you, Andreas. And then I was kicked back out. All right. Now that I've got my payment, I can give Clara the rent early. I'll give it to her directly to make sure she receives it. Do I have to go do that now? I'm kind of supposed to go to the sacristy. Or, or the... Somewhere. Scriptorium. I'm gonna go in the shrine. Look at this. <laughs> Gertrude. God bless you, Master Mahler. How goes your work in the scriptorium? I have no idea. Very well, thank you. Oh, then I guess you wouldn't be interested in the saffron, Agnes... Steinauer and down Steinauer and received yesterday. What? Saffron? Really? Where'd you hear that? Sister Matilda saw her at the Albans. Maybe you can convince Prior Ferenc to get some for your yellows. Good to know. How's Mousefinger? She's around here somewhere, hopefully getting to the baby rabbits before Sister Matilda does. Oh, is it a kitty? Until later, Sister Gertrude. Bless you, Andreas. Maybe I'll see you by the shrine of Saint Satya one of these days. Lisbeth. God bless you. Margareta. God bless you. 
brother Piero? No, wait, it's Master Mother. I thought you couldn't see, Sister Margareta. During the day, I can see some colors. How did you know it was me? Your smell. You and Brother Piero both smell of the pigments you use. But you're taller, and you have another smell to you, like fish or burned almonds. I smell like arsenic? Is it arsenic? Cyanide. I smell like cyanide. Oh, that's old linseed oil. Popular among the Italians, but Brother Piero doesn't use it. I'm also much more handsome. I'll ask Sister Gertrude about it. How are Sister Gertrude's herbs coming? It's too early to tell. Most of them won't be grown until May. Still, working with herbs suits me. Have a good day, Sister Margareta. God bless you. What's this? Brother Mattia maintains this shrine along with some of the sisters who paint badges for pilgrims. Okay. Convent garden? Oh, I can't leave? I guess I can't leave. Uh, how do I get to the scriptorium? I guess maybe it's lower? And then... Meadow. I'm gonna go give her the tax money, even though I'm supposed to be working. Irises. Beautiful! The figures in this shrine to St. Christopher are quite nice. I could be looking at all the entries in the glossary, but... I never do that, really. It always bores me. <laughs> Too much reading all at once. Wait, what? Where am I? Shrine of Satya. Waterfall. I'm totally a very bad worker. <laughs> I'm like, let's go for a stroll and check out a waterfall. Snowdrops. One of the only flowers that can bloom this early in spring at this altitude. Mill? A shrine to St. Moritz. The statue looks ancient. Well, yeah, I'd say. Ah, column. Looks like it's coming in early. Unfortunately. I can't even really say that word on YouTube. Bye, dude. You don't see me. Neither do you. Bye, bye, bye. I am on a mission. Very important mission. Hey, lady. Can't remember your name. Hello. I have something for you. Oh. Should be enough to pay my rent and the tax you owe the Abbey. Andreas. This is far more than your rent payment. We can't accept this. It's the least I can do. You and Peter have been such gracious hosts. But Andreas, how did you even find so much coin? Are you sure you'll have enough to spare for yourself? No. I convinced Brother Matthew to pay me a bit early. I wanted to be sure you could pay your taxes in time. God bless you a thousand times. You don't know what this means to us. I'm happy to help. It's the Christian thing to do. Probably best not to mention it. Of course, I won't mention it to anyone. Still, thank you. I'll let you move on with your day. Until later. My first quest complete. Is that not how I go? I'm going the wrong way. You'd think I would know where I live by now. So can I move up the paths then? Oh yeah, I can. That was fun. <laughs> Let's go. I like how the sheep are inconspicuously blocking that path. And that one. What about this way? Oh, it's just to the meadow. 
Oh, this is the way I came. Oh, what's up this way? Oh, that's the mill. That's just a, a different path. Ugh. Okay, this road. No, this one. Maybe I need to get a head start? A running start. No. Oh. I'm a fool. I need one of those little hats. And a scepter. Hello, Abby. Okay, so I'm guessing maybe this is the way to go to the scriptorium? The guest house? No. Abbot house? No. Do I go through the cloister? It really wasn't clear. There's the shrine. Oh, I guess I I go. Was there a door next to this sacristy or I go through the dorms? I guess I'll try going through the dorms. I am confused. Was this the dorms? No. Wait. I don't know what's happening. Monastery. Aquarium. Monster. Oh. I didn't even see that. Old Bailey. I am almost there. I am there. But I want to see what these other places are. Cemetery. Victorium. Friar's house. Where do I go to get some saffron? I'm just going to sneak in. Like I was, wasn't late. Is this my spot? Am I shoved in the back? I guess I have to talk to people. God bless you. So good to see you. Good morning, Brother Piero. Good to see you as well. I don't like this weather. My bones ache. It means a storm is coming. Other dude could smell it. So one of you is right. Big York Gartner says that if you live here 10 or 15 years, you can smell storms coming. Brother Adok has been here long enough that we can always smell him coming. <laughs> Do not forget, Brother Guy. The fate of the youths who jeered the aged prophet Elisha outside of Bethel. Are you comparing yourself to a prophet, Brother Adok? I am comparing you to an impudent youth whom the Lord, in his ineffable wisdom, may choose to strike down. Calm yourself, Brother Adok. You're too sensitive to guys' jokes. Say nothing. Well, everyone seems quite lively. I suppose that means Prior Ferenc is not overseeing us today. He was here, but then he heard Lorenz Rothbogel had arrived, and he hurried out like a little mouse. Ein Mausfinger? Ferenc is so desperate to impress the abbot and nobles like Rothbogel, it's pathetic. You feign kindness to Father Abbot and our prior only to speak about them like this behind their backs. It's shameful. Oh, oh no, Baron Rothvogel, his manuscript. I just realized that he will want to see his manuscript. How silly of me. Of course, that's why he's visiting. Get to work. Perhaps if you were younger and faster, you wouldn't need to worry so much about patrons' visits. You're kind of a jerk, guy. Guy, someday you will stand where Piero is, and a young monk will stand where you are now. Mors etiam definiti seculo venit. Death also came to Daphnis of Sicily. Hmm. Anyway, what's the problem? Baron is just one client, he has to wait like anyone else. 
Andreas, Baron Rothvogel is not like anyone else. He has powerful friends, including the Prince Bishop of Freising. Kearsaw is already out of favor. Father Abbott does not want to have to deal with more attention. Well, if Prior Ferenc isn't here, I'm going to work on my masterpiece until he arrives. I don't think it's normal to call your work a masterpiece before you're even done with it. Oh, that's right. I need to reference the Indermauer manuscript. What do you want, Andreas? A book. The Indermauer manuscript. The Book of Hours. Your hair looks messy today. Did you get enough sleep? What do you mean? I mean, did you sleep alone? Or... Why do you want to know? It would be nice to have something to think about during divine reading. Have you considered the Lord? <laughs> you really are a cloud on a sunny day, Andreas. Could I just get the book? <laughs> That's all the way upstairs. Can't you get by without it? I'm sorry, but I really can't. I need to reference it for my work. Really? My feet hurt, and the stairs are so steep. I'm just going to ask Illuminata to get it. Mr. Illuminata! Andreas needs a book, and he's being inappropriate with me. <laughs> Look at her head sticking out of the door. Andreas? I wasn't being inappropriate with her. I didn't think that you were. Sister is Dana has a poor attitude toward her vocation, the rule, and, I suppose, the Ten Commandments. Um, I imagine it takes some longer than others to accept their new lives here. She may yet come around. Charitable of you, but perhaps you are right. I should not have been so quick to judge her. In any case, I overheard you requesting the Indermauer manuscript. Here, please return it promptly. Okay, thanks. Look at my lovely masterpiece. Where are you going? Andreas, may I see how your masterpiece is coming? Of course, your opinion is always welcome. Yes, the composition is lovely. There is a joyful spirit in your arrangement of the figures. That's nice. The contrast of colors is also quite nice. Rich and beautiful on their own, but not overpowering the scene. Almost as if they were complementary colors. They're not. It doesn't feel right. I don't know why. Maybe because they're not complementary colors. An excellent interpretation of someone else's work. What do you mean? It's all my work. My son, you're copying the illustration from the Indermauer manuscript. Almost exactly. So? What's wrong with that? Haven't I improved on it? Aesthetically, yes, it's wonderful. But I feel you have not given much thought to what it represents. It's... November. In November, we show peasants leading the pigs into the forest to forage on acorns before the slaughter. Andreas, the peasants here are no longer allowed to forage acorns in the forest. Many great lords and abbots across the empire have forbidden it, even Father Gernot. What difference does it make? This is the way November is painted. But it is not the way November is. Good point. Art is illusion, storytelling. But in their most sublime form, these images illuminate a path to truth. It's, look at her head sticking out the door. <laughs> it's most important to me that my clients are happy. They won't pay me for truth. Nobody wants the truth. Yes, but with God's grace, this book of ours will outlive us all. What will it say to those who see it in a future generation? Then centuries beyond our comprehension. 
Some will gaze deep into your lines and paint to seek a deeper meaning. What will they find? But you need not listen to my opinions. They are just the thoughts of one old monk. There is no place for the monastic scriptoria anymore. In truth, this room is a place out of time. Does that make you sad? Why is that? Why has Kirsau kept this up for so long? Some people, some places, have a difficult time letting go of the past. I am not among them. The creation of books, of art, is no longer the province of monasteries. So be it. More people will be able to write, more will be able to read, and in so doing, be brought to truth. Don't you think there's a danger in anyone being able to write, anyone being able to read anything? I think there will always be a place for artists like you and Brother Adok. Yeah. And Brother Guy. It's kind of you to say so, Andreas, but you need not be concerned for me. I have lived a long life and am happy to have served the Lord. When he calls for me, I am ready. Lunchtime! Don't everybody rush for the door. He would rush. <laughs> ah, where has the time gone? It's already... I don't know how to pronounce it. I want to say Terche. It's already third. Too much talk. I must ask forgiveness for not honoring the rule. Until later, Andreas. Till later. What are you doing? It almost looked like he did that on purpose. And what are you doing? We're suddenly playing Name of the Rose. Shrunk. What's going on in here? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but I am concerned about my head. I have some kind of illness. <laughs> it's making it grow and shrink alarmingly. Andreas, what was that noise? I'm sorry, Sister Illuminata. I knocked a bowl of paint to the floor. But then Prior Ferenc came in, wrote in one of his books, slammed it closed, and left. He was in such a hurry, I don't think he even noticed me. He was slamming books shut? Prior Ferenc should know better than that. Some of these manuscripts are quite delicate. I fully agree. Delicate or not, all books should be treated with the utmost care. Many contain precious wisdom that can aid even the unenlightened in growing closer to God. They should be protected and cared for, which is why books should not be taken out of the library unless it is necessary for divine reading or work in the scriptorium. Yeah. Oh, well, that reminds me. Are you still mad at me for borrowing the Chronica Clara? No. Anger is not an appropriate response for a nun. I'm disgruntled and unhappy. <laughs> and slightly irate. But the fact remains that you tricked me into giving you that book for no valid reason. Not valid? Is it not valid to want to see the work of one of the great Irish scribes? One who wrote masterworks that even now grace libraries at Cologne, Fulda, and Mainz? No, it's not. Not unless it pertains to your work or the abbot permits it. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait, what's all this fuss about Lawrence Rothfolk? Why is Prior Ferenc so nervous? Lawrence? I didn't know you were familiar enough with the man to use his Christian name. Anyway, I haven't dealt with him personally, but the Prior and Father Abbot have. 
I only know that he's purchased a number of our most valuable manuscripts over the years. And he paid enough to help the Abbey when we needed it. Like what? What did he buy? I can't remember. You know, I have my own responsibilities to attend to. How about this, Andreas? If you help me recover some missing books, I'll tell you what I know about the Baron. Well, I was hoping to work on my masterpiece, but I suppose I can help. I understand, but there is rarely a time when I am in the scriptorium and the brothers are not present. Thank you. It's for the good of the Abbey. Where should I begin? Out there, where you and your cohort have carelessly strewn books around the scriptorium. I will tell you what books I'm looking for. Find them and return them to me. The first books are two volumes of the Aeneid. Reddish covers, 14 inches by 10 inches, three inches thick. Okay. Innsbruck inches or Nuremberg inches? Oh, I know the ones. They're among Piero's favorites. He keeps them by my desk. They are not his to keep. Oh, you grumpy grump. Da -da -da! There's a fair amount of wear on these. I hope you don't mind. So cool. Those volumes were old even when Piero started to make the copies. How long ago was that? Three years. The Aeneid is not one of my favorite stories, but I understand why it appeals to Piero. Lady, with your big head, you don't fit in. Aeneas chose his duty to the gods over his lover, Dido. Talium non. Uh, do you think Aeneas's sense of duty appeals to Piero? We all have our vocations. I wonder if I'm getting those Latin options because I chose Latin as my specialty. We all have our vocations. Brother Piero takes his more seriously than most of the others in this abbey. You clearly take your chosen vocation seriously. Andreas, I didn't have a choice in my vocation. Few women do. True, but that doesn't mean women can't take pride in their vocations. Yeah, I guess. In the city of ladies, Christine de Pizan defended women of all classes by showing their value to society. An admirable effort, but even if we do exactly as we are told, we are portrayed as vehicles of sin. <laughs> that doesn't even fit in the <laughs> in the frame. Temptresses and seducers by virtue of our sex, even when men are the aggressors. Still hasn't stopped, has it? Even in the Abbey, we must travel in pairs, lest we tempt the brother or others. And here, in these pages, Virgil casts Dido as Aeneas's seducer, though it was the gods that thrust her into his arms. Like Dido, we ordinary women are merely tools in the tales of men. We can never be the protagonists of our own stories. No woman is exempt from that. From the empress to a nun, it is our lot. I suppose I understand now why you are not fond of the Aeneid. It's fine poetry for men. Now, the books, if you please. Okay. Thank you. Next, Wretched Garen. This is a printed copy, green cover, diamond pattern. I do not have the size in the ledger, but hopefully the description is enough. I know the one you're talking about. Brother Adok was reading it. When was Adok? This dude? Oh, it's over here. The beauty of this book truly belies its ridiculous content. I'm surprised the Abbey owns a copy. I love it with my big head. We don't. It belongs to Amadea Rusco of Lugano. 
the Venetian edition that's quite valuable. He loaned it to us five years ago. It was subsequently lost, and the abbot has received three letters about it. I've certainly seen the brothers enjoying it. That book is not appropriate reading for Benedictine monks. A baby is sold to pirates, raised a servant, then lives the life of adventure wooing princesses and fighting in tournaments. You forgot the best part. In the end, Garen learns he has royal blood, the son of a duke. He reigns as a king and dies a pious hermit. What's not to love? Benedictines should be dreaming of reconciliation with our Lord, not lusty adventures. I suppose you're right. It's better suited for knaves, like me. It's not my place to reprimand anyone for reading stories, least of all you, Andreas. Still, we must be on guard. Fantasy leads to temptation. Temptation has led to the downfall of many men and women. Sometimes, yes, but books like this, it's all the same type of fantasy, isn't it? To die better than we are born. And what's the problem with that? Why shouldn't a peasant dream of being a king? There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We may be one in Christ, but we are not equal in this world. It isn't this world you should be concerned with, Andreas. But the book, Andreas, we must return it. Or would you like the abbey, the abbot to receive a fourth letter? I understand. I'd hate to loan a book and never get it back. It would be like losing a limb. That's why you don't loan books. Or games. Well, perhaps a small limb. Or my little finger. Regardless of the size and importance of the body part in question, I understand and appreciate it. It's not my goal to deprive the brothers of their joy, but to return Amadea Rusko's property. The book, please. I'm trying to remember how to pronounce the SC in Italian. Don't remember. There is only one book left, and then you will be freed from bondage. Good, because I'm hungry. A dark red cover, eight inches high, five inches across, two inches thick. Dark red. Oh, I remember that. I believe Brother Guy was reading it. This quest isn't that difficult, because everything's, like, <laughs> highlighted by an, by an, uh, an icon. Ah, this one I can read. Now that I think about it, Guy has always been guarded about this book. Like he was hiding it. It's not clear why. I guess because it's talking about love? Very good. Please bring it here. What is this anyway? Ah, it's in French. The soul that God touched, empty of sin in the first state of grace. What is this? Why are you asking so many questions? Just give it to me. I like this illustration. I'm sorry, but I just love books too much to let this go without knowing what it is. Curiosity can be a dangerous thing, Andreas, especially in a place like this. Three French bishops condemned the book. All copies were to be burned. Its authors shared the same fate. What? Why? I don't know, Andreas. It isn't my place to question the judgment of one bush bishop. Bishop. Much less three. And before you ask, no, I haven't read it but I know it contains a dialogue between love and reason. So the book is dangerous. When did the bishops condemn it? Wow. You guys are flying. This is cool. 
200 years ago. What? Why? Why is it still here? Because Father Matthias loved books, all books. He didn't want to see it destroyed. And he was right to do so. Books shouldn't be destroyed, even if their content is in question. The Holy Church does not share your opinion. It is their law we must contend with, not your emotions. Fumed silently. It's not my place to question the former abbot's decision, but when Father Guernot learned it was in our possession, he wanted it destroyed. No! Don't give it to her. Must the book be destroyed? No one even knows that it's here. Well, I refuse to give it to you if you, all you're going to do is destroy it. What? Why not? What are you going to do with it? <laughs> Read it and become a French heretic. I'm not sure. I'll hide it. Keep it safe. Give me that book, or our deal is forfeit. I won't tell you anything about Bar Baron Rothbogel. I can figure it out on my own. I propose a compromise. I will take the book from the Abbey. Far away. I'll be gone by the time Father Guernot asks about it, and if you like, you can say I stole it. I doubt he'll make a fuss about me stealing a book he wanted destroyed. I shouldn't be trying to bargain with a nun about lying. I should have just, like, talked about her, her theological choices. I don't like this, Andreas. It feels wrong in my heart. It feels right enough in my heart for... both of us? I don't think so. That doesn't even make any sense. Consider the sound theological reasons for allowing this book to exist. More sound than a condemnation from three bishops of Paris? I mean, who are you gonna trust? Them or me? Offered to help, uh... I didn't realize there was like... Eh. Thank you for making my decision so easy. Did you leave university voluntarily or were you expelled? We have... Oh, well, I appeal to your duty as the librarian of this abbey to not destroy this book. My duty is to God and to the vows I made. To the rule. But you do love books as well. I know you do. Period. New sentence. Look at all the ups. Yeah. Andreas, I love God. Books contain knowledge that can help bring us closer to his truth. I do not love books as things, but I love that books can convey God's truth. It is not my place to judge your love of books, but it is not a love we share. My love burns bright enough for both of us. I mean it, sister. You cannot destroy this book. Andreas, you sound deranged. It's only a book. And it might be the only one left. Then just let me keep the book, please. Now you sound even more deranged. I'm sorry. We have nothing more to discuss. The book stays with me. So be it. I tried. I tried everything. Time to eat. And that is going to be where I call it for this Let's Try episode of Pentiment. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be playing this on my own time. There's a lot of reading, a lot of talking out loud. I don't think I could keep this up for the whole game. But if you guys liked the video, please don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time with whatever game I'm playing next. Thanks for watching.